Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Greetings, friends. This is the last of the harvest for this year. Last of what we've grown. We're gonna be harvesting beets, turnips, and radishes. That'll be it for this growing season. It for this year. Seasons change. Speaking of seasons changing, today we're getting a little bit later start than we typically do because it was pretty cold this morning. We had our coldest morning yet. It was down to like 22, 24 degrees, somewhere around there. And uh, just now getting out here when things have warmed up and things have defrosted, so we can get started with the harvest. So uh, let's see if we can knock these beets out. All right. So we're gonna cut, leave the leaves, put the root right in there. Typically when we harvest the beets, we'll leave them in bunches with the leaves on there and then we'll just rubber band them together as a bunch. But today, we're harvesting them to preserve them. We're gonna be probably fermenting some, dehydrating some, and even canning some. So we're just leaving the roots to do that. And then the leaves we can use for something else. You put them in salads, you can cook them like Swiss chard, whatever. A piggy! Oh, I found a piggy one! Ooh, that one's pretty big. You like big ones? <laughs> Alrighty, I got it. Hey, pal. Keep it going. Oh. Little one. There's a big one with it. This one is like old. That an old man. <laughs> This is a dad. Uh -huh. Check out my hands. Uh, <laughs> it looks kind of weird, doesn't it? Well, these aren't the biggest beets that I've ever seen, but for us, this is really, really good because in the past, we had really heavy clay here and we really weren't able to grow beets at all. But now we are through just over the past couple years, just really adding compost to the soil and a lot of love we're able to produce beets now. So I look forward to continuing to add love and for them to grow even better. So that way they have a nice rich environment, loose soil, and able to access the nutrients that they need to grow. And speaking of accessing the nutrients to grow, Josiah has this radish that he's been growing in a compost pile and it's huge. This is probably the biggest radish you've ever seen. Look how big that thing is. It's huge, isn't it? I can't even fit my whole hand around it. Let me. Whoa, I can't even. It's probably the biggest radish you ever seen. Look at what we have here, just in time to help out. I found a few that you missed. Oh, thanks. Interesting. Looking at these orange beets here, you can tell where the, they have some frost damage right here on the stems and the leaves. But the red ones seem to be a lot more hardy to the frost. Just an interesting observation there. Lift. Good lift. All right, since you guys are here, why don't you go ahead and help us harvest the next 50 foot row of beets? We'll definitely appreciate the extra hand, won't we, Micah? Mm -hmm.
Don't you look at that? I said, my friend, what you looking at? I think she is something for me. Excuse me, miss. It's my first time here. Maybe you could show me out of here. I think she got something in me. So please forgive my rudeness if I'm tripping over your time. But you look so amazing. And we Saying, hey, girl, will you marry me? Two kids in a house and live happily. I think we are so meant to be. But she says, wait, you forgot something. Every good thing comes to an end. At least it always happened to me. I personally like twisting off the tops better than cutting them myself. But your hands get a little more yuckier like Sayla. Man, I thought mine were red. <laughs> Let's see yours too. I really do. Yeah, it looks like something bad happened over here. <laughs> here, Sail, let me get this in here and then we'll see if they like them. They're interested for sure. Well, I think this answers our question if they like it or not. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's put this out. Here. This is another one. I'm gonna put it all down here. Oh wow, they like these. <laughs> I like the leaves better than the stems. Don't eat my hand. It might smell like beets, but it's not a beet. Libby loves belly rubs. And Hazel, she doesn't like her belly rub very much. Bucky, if you rub his head, sometimes he likes it, but right now he's hungry. So he's kind of moving away. Head down, down. And this is Coco. Come here, Coco. She loves belly rubs. These are beets. So after taking the beets through their first wash, next, Sayla and our farm friend and help, Sarah, cut off the tops. And then I took them through their second wash.
And then after that, we brought them back inside where the ladies cooked them until they were soft. And then once they were cool, Sayla and Sarah peeled them and sliced them. Most of the beets we are preserving by canning. However, Lacey decided that she was going to do some by pickling them. Well, we're pickling all of them, but we're going to can some of them. And I wanted some that was just done in the refrigerator. So I ended up taking two half gallon jars and layering some red onion in there with our uh, beets and then pouring a pickling liquid on them. And they're going to sit in the fridge for a couple weeks and then they'll be done. But the rest of them, we decided we were just going to can. I'm still new to canning, so the, all the different terms, the pickling this and the fermenting that, I still get confused on from time to time. But thankfully, we had Sarah to help out throughout most of the process. Yeah. And Sarah's been a huge help here on the homestead, helping on all different th tasks around the farm, mostly on the outside. However, she just found out she was pregnant, or is pregnant, so she's probably going to be doing a lot more stuff on the inside, like canning here. Yeah, she's been a huge help, and neither one of us have canned in the last several years, so it was nice to work with her to kind of get back in the groove, you could say. And I guess as you were starting to get back into the groove, you did have to shake off some rust or dust or whatever, because you did have a little bit of an accident. Yeah, we, we kind of screwed up. <laughs> So we had our jars heated and we took them out and we had our pickling liquid heated uh, but our beets weren't so warm and there were two quarts that we packed and put everything in and set them down in our water bath and the bottoms busted out of the jars whoops yeah whoops but you know it, it's okay it, it's what happens and you just kind of have to take it in stride and we just started over what do you mean you're wasting our beets Accidents happen, right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, bad things happen sometimes. It's okay. We know how not to do it again. So what did you do after that? Well, we figured out our beets weren't warm enough. We had our pickling liquid was hot and our jars were hot. So, you know, the beets should have been warmer than what they were. So we warmed up the beets and then uh, at that time Sarah had to leave so I was kind of on my own, which was fine. And I just packed the jars. Or the pickling liquid. We had to, you know, you have to make sure you get all the air bubbles out. I did that. Don't cut it like that. Don't cut it. Wipe the rims off really good. Make sure they're clean. And then uh, put your hot lid on top. And then, and then you put it in your water bath can. And after all that, we're still not done. But we're close. We've made a lot of progress. Check it out. All these beets have been canned right here. Still have these to go, but that's still a lot of yummy goodness. And that's about three and a half gallons of beets total between the ones pickled in the refrigerator and the ones that we've canned. And we still have, I mean, over a gallon left. So, you know, I'm pretty happy with that harvest. I am too, but since we have some more to do, it's time to beat it. See you next time.